The question constantly comes up, what is the best Linux distribution for beginners? Now, I've gone back and forth on this, you know, you know I've, I've had different ideas on what distros are appropriate for beginners, what distros are not appropriate for beginners, but the more and more that I think about this, I've come to the conclusion that Arch Linux is the perfect Linux distribution for the beginner. Let's discuss. So I love Arch Linux, right? I've been a Arch user on and off for years. I've used a lot of Arch-based Linux distributions over the years, but of course I hop to non-Arch distros a lot too. You know, I've been a bit of a distro hopper in my past, but I've always been probably a Arch fanboy, right? Uh, and it's not just me. They have such a loyal fan base, Arch Linux does, right? Because of the rolling release model, their fantastic package manager, Pac-Man, uh, the community repository, the AUR, the fact that you can get pretty much every piece of software known to man <laughs> installed on Arch Linux without having to go out and build anything from source. Now, over the years, I've mentioned that really Linux distributions, they don't really matter. Every Linux distribution is basically the same and you know, I always throw out this caveat, that's for a user like me. Uh, the Linux distribution I use doesn't matter because typically I'm going to put all my config files, I'm going to customize it with all my dot files and everything from my GitLab repository. What is underneath the hood, whether it's Arch or Fedora or Gentoo or Ubuntu or whatever the distro may be, Functionally, and the look and feel is going to be exactly the same regardless of the Linux distribution I use. But I'm not your typical Linux user. Distributions do matter. And I do think it matters what you install as a beginner. So one of the things when you first install Linux, you want to learn. Are you coming to Linux just to use a computer? If all you want to do is just turn on a computer and browse the web, you know, hang out with your friends on Facebook, and that's it. That's all you use your computer for. Arch Linux is a horrible Linux distribution for that kind of beginner. But are you the kind of beginner that actually wants to know about Linux? Because I think most people, when they come to Linux, most of us actually want to learn about Linux. We are not like most Windows users. Most Windows users didn't install Windows. They bought a machine that happened to have Windows on it. They're not enthusiastic about Windows. They're not excited about Windows. They don't want to learn anything about win Windows. But Linux users are completely different. We make a conscious choice to run Linux, and because of that, I think most of us actually do want to know a little bit about Linux. So I think a horrible choice is your standard Ubuntu installs, Mint, Elementary, Fedora, things like that with such dead simple installers. You know, you click OK three or four times and you're done in 10 minutes. You learned nothing about Linux doing an install process like that. Not only that, at the end of those distro installs, distros like Ubuntu and Mint and Elementary, Fedora, you know, they give you a pre-configured Linux distribution, right? All the background services and daemons that are running, this config desktop environment with all the bells and whistles. You know, you really didn't have to build anything. At the end of the day, it's not even really your distribution, right? It's not like you set that up. Where a distribution like Arch, when you're done with that installation process, you can say, hey, I built that. When you first come to Linux, you have no idea what things like a TTY are. Right? You don't know how to probe your USB devices with command line tools like LSUSB. You don't really know how to partition a drive. You don't know how to use tools like FDisk or CFDisk. You don't know how to make your Extend4 file system or your ButterFS file system or ZFS file system or whatever it is you want to create. You don't know how to create swap partitions or swap file depending on whether you even want to use swap. You're not aware of things like LVM. You really don't know anything about disk encryption. You're not sure about what Linux kernel you should be running. This is the kind of information I think beginner Linux users need to know. But the problem is, you know, all of this 
stuff that I just mentioned is going on in every Linux distributions install process, but graphical installers for the more popular Linux distributions out there, they hide all of this stuff. You don't get to see the partitions being created, you know, and the file system being unsquashed and, and things like that. You don't really know what's going on because you really didn't partake in that in any way other than you clicked OK two or three times and magically at the end of the install process you have Linux installed. Well Arch is different because Arch forces you to go step by step and really feel like you own your computer right at the end of the day. Again that is your machine and at the end of the day that was your operating system that you installed that you built from the ground up. Now I know uh, there's a lot of people that are going to watch this video and just pull their hair out, you know, when I say Arch is the perfect beginner distro. That Arch is ideal for the Linux beginner. And the reason I say that is because when we talk about the Linux noob, you know, as the Linux beginner, or when we talk about the Linux power user or the Linux experienced user, I mean, there's no real metric to define the difference between the noob and the power user, right? There's a lot of gray area in between. You can be a really elite Linux power user and use something like Ubuntu. You absolutely can. I, I often use Ubuntu. You can also be a complete noob and install Arch Linux. People do it all the time. It's one of those things I tell people all the time. The Arch installation is not that hard. I've seen brand new to Linux users get that thing installed, no problem. I've talked people through the installation before, you know, over the phone or sometimes over video conferencing. It's not that hard to talk somebody through a base Arch install, as long as, long as you're willing to learn, as long as you're willing to read, study, and think for yourself. You can jump right in. The learning curve for Arch isn't anywhere near its reputation that it gets from certain segments of the Linux community. Uh, the installation process, again, is not that hard. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Maintaining an Arch-based system, also not that hard. It's nowhere near as bad, again, as its reputation seems to be out there on the Internet. One caveat, though, regarding maintaining an Arch system, you will have little paper cuts. You will have minor breakages from time to t time, especially as a new to Linux user. You just can't help that. You're going to run into things you really don't know what you're doing or how to fix. So know this, Arch Linux, the community behind it is also not like communities behind other distributions, say your Ubuntu's and Mint's and Fedora's and things like that, right? You will not be spoon fed, right? No one is going to think for you. If you install Arch Linux using the Arch installation guide, as you should, because that is the only official way to install Arch Linux, don't get offended if for some reason you decide not to do any research on your own and you go to the forums or the IRC chat channel and you know ask for help and you receive the RTFM which is go read the effing manual don't be offended by that they're doing that for your own good right it's to help you learn about Linux the RTFM crowd is doing this because they want to mold you into a legit Linux user. They want you to become a do-it-yourselfer. They want you to become a fixer. That way you get used to fixing your own problems. Every time you have a problem, go read the manual first. And 99% of the time, if you do that, you will find the answer, and the answer is probably easy enough that you can fix it without needing help. Now, if you come across a problem that you can't fix, the Arch community is fantastic. As long as you go to the forums or the IRC chat, explain the problem you're having, explain what you did to try to fix it, then you're going to be met with, you know, just a cornucopia of help. You know, everybody's going to be offering to help you because that's what a community does. But failure to do your own proper research first, you're going to be met with probably just crickets or maybe worse. So get in there and play around a little bit. You start learning Linux by using Linux. And when I say using Linux, I mean you actually need to build Linux yourself, right? You don't need to be spoon-fed with these easy graphical installers. Again, you start learning Linux by using Linux, 
you need to go in there, grab the Arch ISO. If you've never installed Arch Linux, go grab the ISO. I promise you that installation guide is very short, to the point, you can get it installed. And you know what? If a problem occurs, you can probably fix it. Again, go back to the wiki, read a little bit. Knowledge is the key. Pretty much anybody can get through an Arch installation. Pretty much if you can, you know, boot from a live disk, you know, SSH into a machine, you know, run F disk, set up your partitions, add the root user, add a home user, make your file system, mount the file system, run the pack strap command, and make sure you're, you're mounted. Then you need to, to root, um, you need to, you know, do the FS tab, your know, file system table. You may have to run a few commands in Pac Man. You may have to install, you know, your bootloader and things like that. Well, you should configure your bootloader as well. Remember that. Uh, then, of course, at the very end, you need to unmount and reboot. But that's about it. And that's really about it to an Arch installation. So, yeah, the ideal beginner distro. Before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Corbinian, Lambda, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sean, Stephanie, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show wouldn't be possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen there that help support my work over on Patreon. Again, a sincere thank you to each and every one of those guys. Without these people, again, this channel would not be possible. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.